Welcome to this video series for people who are new to Postman. In this video, we're gonna look at how you can chain requests in order to create a specific workflow. In our case, we are working with the GitHub API. And so far we have created a repository, created an issue, and we have a very, very simple workflow. The next thing we can do in order to complete our workflow is to delete the repository. Now, deleting the repository is very important because if we want to run this collection multiple times, we will generate a lot of data and it's important to clean data that you don't need anymore. In order to understand how to delete the repository, we are back at the GitHub documentation, looking at the repository section. And let's see if we can find something regarding deleting a repository. And that can be found here. And the information needed in order to delete the repository is again the owner name and the repository name. And the HTTP verb that we use this time is delete. So let's copy this and try to make it work from Postman. I'm gonna create a new tab, paste this information, make the address complete. And all we have to do here at the owner is to use the environment variable owner that we have defined and for the repository to use the repository name. Now the repository name is randomly generated and we can no longer hard code something. And even here for creating an issue, we can no longer have this repository hard coded here. In order to get this to run, we will be using the environment variable called repository name. So everywhere where we have the repository name, we can simply refer to this environment variable. So I'm gonna use it in the create issue and again here in the delete repository. So let's select the HTTP verb delete instead of get. And now we should have in place everything that we need. In order to benefit from the authorization, we're gonna save this request to the same collection. So let's start again from the beginning. So in the first request, in the pre-request script, we generate a value which we save in a variable called repository name. And we are using it in the request body, but in the next request as well, in order to refer to this request. And creating variables and using them in multiple requests is the most fundamental way on how you can chain the request in Postman. Because most of the time, the requests are not working on their own. There is always a moving piece. And most of the time, the information that is missing from one request is available in the other request. Now, in this case, we have saved this information in the pre-request script. But sometimes you only have this information available in the response body. And exactly the same thing can be done here as well. You can parse the response body and then set an environment variable with a specific value that you are interested in. For example, if it's the ID or some other information that you do not know in advance. And this is quite common. And in other requests where you need this information, you can simply get it from that respective environment variable. In this case, the repository name, or if you need this information in tests, you can simply use the pm.star API in order to retrieve that information. So I'm gonna run the first request. I've created a repository. Now I'm creating an issue. And after this, I'm deleting the repository. Now, as you can see from this request, deleting the repository didn't work. We got here a 403 status code, which means we are not allowed to make this change here. Nevertheless, let's try to write a test which indicates if this repository has been successfully deleted. We should expect a status code 200. So this is the first test that we can add here. But additionally, if we want to make sure that this repository has been deleted, one way to do it is to actually try to get the same repository once again. So let's take a quick look at the documentation to see how we can manage that. So if we want to get a repository, we'll go to get. And all we have to provide is this URL structure where owner and repo are again path variables and we need to provide those. So let's try to make this time a get request. We actually expect this get request to fail. So as you can tell, getting a repository is pretty similar to the address that we have used to delete a repository. 
we need to fill the owner and the repository with the proper values. And this time we expect to get a 404 status code. That means not found. We don't want to find this repository after we have deleted it. So let's save this request. Let's call it get deleted repository. And let's run this request. And this time we'll see that the tests fail. We got 200, but we expected a 404. So let's now try and fix this request. So obviously when we have created a token, we didn't create the proper permissions in order to delete the repository. So we're still missing the admin rights. And this is when variables really play an important role. So they not only separate sensitive values from our collection, but they additionally allow us to replace a value if for whatever reason we need to do that. So I'm here back at GitHub. I'm gonna go to settings, developer settings, personal access tokens. So let's generate a new token and call it Postman2. We're gonna assign repo settings. And additionally, we're gonna set here delete repo as well and generate a token. All I have to do is copy this token, go back in Postman, simply change this token value that I have here. And now I can retry deleting the repository. And you'll see the status code that I've received is 204, so I need to change that here. So that indicates that this has been deleted. But the additional test that we are doing is to actually try to fetch this deleted repository. And now we are trying to fetch this repository by using the HTTP GET verb. And we get a 404 as a status code. And for that reason, this is now a workflow and this is how it works. Now, every time I create a new repository, if I go this workflow step-by-step, -step, create a repository, create an issue, delete a repository, I'm guaranteed to have a clean GitHub account, which doesn't contain a lot of repositories that I don't need. So to sum everything up, we have created a very simple workflow, which involves a few simple steps using the GitHub API. We have leveraged the usage of environment variables in order to pass information from one request to the other and to make everything dynamic. And as you can notice, I can now run each and every request step by step and I don't have to do any other changes to the request because everything is now dynamic. Some parts of the test contain dynamic information. Information is being dynamically passed from one request to the other. And this is a very important step toward automation. I hope you have managed to follow along and if you have any issues, take a quick look at the video description for some troubleshooting ideas or feel free to post a comment in the section below. See you in the next video.